everyone. Welcome to Police Off the Cuff, a special edition of Real Crime Stories. I have two amazing guests today. We have retired Chief of the Department, Louis Anamone, who did 34 years on the NYPD. And for today's topic, he's the guru of Ooh. responding to riots, uh, disorder control. He studied it all over the world. There's no one better to talk about this topic. And from the Sergeant's Benevolent Association Union, we have the Vice President, Vinny Vallelong. Vinny, welcome to the show. Uh, what, one of the things I wanted to talk about, the, as you guys know, the report just came out, the Department of Investigation report in regards to the NYPD's response to the riots. And, uh, well, we call them riots. They called them protests. Yeah. And it was very uncomplimentary towards the NYPD. And they came up with 20 recommendations. And, Chief, I know you read the report. Just maybe want to give us a quick overview of uh, your interpretation of what they said. So, to, to uh, begin with, uh, Billy and, and Vinny, and for everyone out there who's listening, the report looks to me to be so politically driven to begin with. Uh, so they had an agenda. It became obvious when you read the report, 110 or 111 pages worth. They had this uh, agenda that kind of tells us that the police are the problem. If you're going to have a demonstration or a protest, you know, the police have got to be, according to them, hands off. Do little or nothing. Uh, <laughs> the interesting thing to me was they... They objected also to the, the helmets, a protective riot helmet uh, they found offensive and threatening to people. Never mind your use of pepper spray or a baton or uh, uh, any of the other defensive techniques that we might be using. So it was a one sided attack. Uh, we can go through the list, you know, page by page and recommendation by recommendation. But they, their heart really wasn't in this. They had no, if this was going to be some sort of a uh, impartial, really good hard look at uh, our performance. And by the way, we've had better days handling riots than we did yes. this summer. Yes. I'm gonna say that at the outset. But well, Chief, Chief, you know one of the things that kills you when everyone's doing a great job and then some knucklehead just tosses some girl to the ground. You're like, you know, that just makes everyone look horrendous, you know? Yeah. It, well, you know, again, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for the knucklehead, but there's no reason why everyone should then be painted, you know, as uh, being uh, incompetent or uh, ineffectual. This was one cop, and you're going to have this. Billy, we're humans. People, right. you know, you don't know the pressures that they're under. To begin with, this was during a, a COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic, right. actually. So there's got to be a little bit of leeway, and we have to expect that humans are going to make mistakes. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, we, we didn't do the best job ever. But uh, putting that aside for the moment, if you're going to do a critique of this summer's police performance, how can you not interview the mayor? You can't tell me that there were not political orders that were given to the commissioner or the chief directly from the mayor or from the mayor's office. How can you not interview the governor? who also had a lot to say during the summer about the police performance or lack of performance. Right. So I want to know, if you're going to do a look at this, what effect did those uh, phone calls or those face-to-face -face meetings have on the police performance and the orders that were given to the cops out in the street? You know, that wasn't, he, they indicate that they spoke to Monaghan and Shay, but they never said what they asked them or what their answers were. Right, right. Vinny, from the union perspective, want you want to give us a little uh, taste of what, what you guys felt and what your biggest arguments against this were? Well, just, just to piggyback off what the chief said, I mean, they never even interviewed the cops on the street. They never interviewed the frontline supervisors on the street as to what orders they were given. I mean, we know from our people, they were held back. They, I, I mean, I, I worked, in, in, I worked in, the, in the task force, in the Manhattan South Task Force during the early 90s. Right, and we handled demonstrations, we handled parades every single day. Right? And we, we had incidents at times, but they were always kept you know, to a minimum. The, the mayor's office, by, letting, by, by giving these orders of hands off, 
basically let the kids run wild throughout the whole entire city and neighborhoods that, that, that weren't even weren't even brought up. It's you know you had the Bronx that pretty much was uh, was almost burnt to the ground. It seemed like in, in the neighborhood where they were at. Um, you know, and, and, and the chief's right. You know, the, the mayor, we all know the mayor knows exactly what was going on. He was getting updates. He was telling them what to do, what not to do. And he let it go. And if he says that he didn't know what was going on, then he was derelict in his duty as being mayor of the city. And, and I mean, our, our guys, our guys got their heads handed to them every single night. I'm My sorry, Vinny, I just wanted to show that was the Lieutenant who was hitting the head with the brick. I guess they didn't see that. They didn't see that one, you know? Well, it, it, we all know that was like a flash probably on the news. Everyone, everyone else seen um, exactly what it was that was going on before that uh, or actually after that when the, when the cops ran up on, on them or the cop drew, drew his gun right after that incident. And, and everyone painted it that the police were the demons in that picture. But they didn't see everything else that built up before that. Right. And, you know, right. and I'm sure the chief, the chief would, would, would definitely say, where were the arrest teams? You know where the arrest teams were? It was the SRG units, which were the task force units. They should never have been the arrest teams. Where was mounted? Mounted. There was no the mounted. There was no. They didn't want mounted there. You know, one of the things, Chief, I took from you. You always taught this was when you respond to a riot, you have to make, take action as a team, not as individuals, as a team, supervisor-led team activity. That was missing from this, yeah. big time. That's that, that, that's the your secret, right? Of this. And then you, you minimize the opportunity then, Bill and Vinny, uh, for those independent cops to, you know, overreact maybe and knock someone to the ground that they shouldn't have. You got to operate as a sergeant and eight, a lieutenant and three sergeants and, you know, 24. Team action, no independent action. The bosses give the direction and, and you know, you move forward. But when you're starting off with the premise that, hey, we don't want you to do anything, that's very, very hard, to, you know, for the cops. It's tough on the cops. When I see after the uh, initial day of that, uh, those uh, protest riots, that they were still showing up at some of these details in soft hats. That's unconscionable to have the cops expose themselves like that. Every one of them, you know, to injury. You had over 400 injuries. Right. I'm, you know, I'm wondering, you know, how many were wearing soft hats when they got hurt. You know, Chief, another interesting, another interesting thing is that one out of seven of people arrested from these protests were from out of town. Yeah, there you go. And what does that tell you about the organization of it and that there were other forces behind this than it appeared? You know, that's a valid point to raise. I, w I was hoping that we would have heard something from the intelligence division in that regard. I'm hoping they have an investigation. You know, that they've opened an investigation that they're trying to, you know, put the pieces together because it's clear, you know, as you watch this, that these people were uh, doing this stuff and it, and it was being coordinated. And if not interstate, certainly over the uh, Internet right. and with their instant messaging back and forth, it was this was an organized protest, but uh, organized by people who didn't want to uh, sit down and have a meeting with the police ahead of time so we could go over as you did, Vinny, in Manhattan South, the root of the parade or the root of the protest or which particular building you wanted to protest at. And that was all handled ahead of time when people, you know, had genuinely uh, the interest, uh, the First Amendment interest at heart. This was more than that. This was, this was not about the First Amendment. Well, Chief, what you were referring to before, and I'm just going to read you a number five of their recommendations. This is in regards to cops wearing helmets. To the extent NYPD deems the assignment of specialized units, officers in riot gear or hard uniforms potentially necessary to protest response, it should stage those officers in nearby areas not visible to protesters for deployment only if necessary. So they don't give a crap about the cops' health. They're worried about upsetting these snowflakes, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, it's, you know, it's a ridiculous, uh, it's a ridiculous recommendation. Uh, again, to the point that Vinny raised, they didn't interview any of these frontline cops. They didn't interview any experts in this field of policing, riots and disorders. You know, they have my number. They know where I am. You right, exactly. <laughs> no, Chief, I had a new hip put in last year and the DOI didn't consult on that with my surgeon. <laughs> <laughs>
but they know everything about police. I'm surprised they don't know anything about replacing hips because they, you yeah, know. Exactly. Oh, God. You know, so, some of the other things, too, is that they should be almost like psychologists on the street. One, another one of their recommendations that they can differentiate between people who are peaceful protesters and people that are there to do harm. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. I'm still trying to figure that out. How do you figure that out? That? <laughs> Would that be some sort of a profile they want you to develop? Yes, it sounds like that. You know, right? It, Profiling. Yeah. How do you? How are you supposed to know that, Vinny? You got any thoughts on that? Well, if, if you remember, the way it used to be done is you they would file for a permit, and then we would know where they would go. We would sit. We would sit. What, who the group was, who the leaders were, which it seems as if that there were no leaders because they. This report also tries to tries to demean our uh, community affairs guys, who are active at every demonstration, every parade, every big incident that's been in this city for probably the past twenty. 30 years, these guys working. And they tried to demonize them in this report, basically saying that they didn't reach out to any of these leaders of these groups. Well, there was no leaders of these groups, right? So no one planned this. This wasn't in the past. Every Everybody that wants to get their message out is allowed to get their message out not in the city. We've had everyone from the Haitian demonstrations to, uh, I mean, the riots in Crown Heights were a little were a little different, but we have major parades, major demonstrations in front of the UN in the past and we always know who the who the person is to go to to talk to. There was no one there this time. So for the mayor or anybody else in DOI, and this was definitely a hit piece on on the NYPD. Oh, I mean, that. it's pretty obvious that I mean the, the the mayor appoints the head of DOI, and there's nothing well, in here. They're, in, they're an independent investigative body, though. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Nobody, nobody on there, I, I believe, has any type of has any experience in law enforcement. So who are they to say, or at least in in, uh, in, in any of the uh, the way that you handle demonstrations. So I'm a little curious where, where they got their experts from and who their experts were, because no one's even named in this report. Yeah, that's a, that's another interesting point. They talk about a, a chief who ran two departments somewhere, uh, somebody else who used to be in community affairs. But let me, uh, again, uh, just tag on your point, Vinny. Uh, we know community affairs reaches out when they can, when there's somebody to talk to. But what about the responsibility, and I didn't see it mentioned in the report, of our political leadership, of our community leaderships? Were they reaching out? Did no. they reach out to us or to anyone else to say, hey, uh, you know, what can we do to help? How can we reduce the, uh, the violence that these groups are, uh, you know, engaging in? Well, most they of them were, sided they were quiet, except when it came to police performance. Keith, most and of them sided with the demonstrators, and I don't know. A lot of people didn't see the violence. They said, "Oh, it's mostly peaceful." I was like, yeah. "What? I'm seeing RMPs burned to the ground. I'm seeing stores looted, stores set on fire. What, what aren't you seeing that I'm seeing? You know, <laughs> it's it's so true. This, so this this was a one sided report." Uh, we, well, we Chief, this is on only that, part right? one. Part two is from coming from the state. Letitia James, an attorney yeah. general, is doing a state oh, hit oh, on this too. You know. So you know, you mentioned earlier, Billy, that they, you know they they talked about that this uh, this disorderly or <laughs> disorder control group. They actually took a shot on page thirty six. They make an assertion with no facts that the disorder control response likely exacerbated the tensions during the protests about policing. And on the page earlier, they said, and listen to this, uh, Vinny, you're, you're a former task force guy. They think that uh, uh, a police, policing a uh, demonstration that has to do a, about police should be handled differently from any other kind of First Amendment uh, Right. What in the world are they talking about? You know, I, where is the sense of impartiality? There is none. Right? No matter what your group is protesting, we treat everyone the same. Whether you're, you know, it's an anti-police because of the Diallo incident or the Luima incident. We live through that. We, we don't take sides with the demonstrators. We handle it exactly the same, whether it's a Thanksgiving Day parade or protest about the Thanksgiving Day parade. So, I mean, you know, they, 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 they lost it with this what, very early on. 
phenomenal about this whole thing is that we've handled this for how many how many decades now and have never had an incident. This administration that's in there now is a complete and total train wreck. They have dismantled the NYPD's units that take care of these type of things. They've given them different a different agenda on what it is, on how it is they're supposed to do their job. Mounted wasn't out that night where Mounted would have been out in the past um, during these riots, and they were riots. They weren't protests. Yeah. But if they were, if they were protests, the, the the leaders would have came up to speak with the NYPD just like it's been done in every other major incident in the past. Yeah, the, the you know, other thing you know that we should say, uh, in your experience, my experience, I think we can agree, when you have a mob an outrageous mob that's rioting. They don't, they don't look to us to see whether or not we're wearing our hard hats to become enraged and to start engaging in looting or setting fires. We're not the trigger for this. And for anyone to write an, an official report that this is, you know, that we're exacerbating it, we're creating it just by being there and being prepared and with, uh, you know, defensive uh, uh, equipment on. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. If what I think says volumes about what Vinny just said. During these riots, Warrants was out on the street and they grabbed two or three guys off the street in a textbook arrest. Very limited force. They scooped the guy up and they were criticized for it. It shows <laughs> that these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. Exactly. Billy, if, if, if Warrants that day, if this was old, old school uh salem they would have been burned as witches right? yeah but it was a t it was a really a textbook arrest with almost no force involved whatsoever yep. and all these people were disturbed by what they saw what, what world council do they live in city council was disturbed by what they saw where was city yeah. council during all of these riots sitting at exactly. home over COVID? their job was to come out and be the leaders that they were elected to be stand up and get the communities organized in order to work with the police and stop what was going on. And none yeah. of them took their head out of the out of the out of the out of the uh, rabbit hole, so to speak. Yeah, Shame I want to just read a statement by the Brooklyn Borough President, who is also a candidate for mayor, regarding the DOI report. The DOI report accurately details the tactical errors and acts of heavy-handed policing we saw on our streets this summer. To rebuild trust between police and communities, we must make immediate changes to the NYPD now, as well as reforms that will change its culture for the future, including far more diversity in leadership and enhanced training in de-escalation and implicit bias. I have detailed my plans for the department will continue to demand these changes are made before the next mayor is in office. In particular, the NYPD must implement my recommendation for a new specially trained unit of officers with excellent communication and de-escalation skills echoed in DOI's recommendations. Yeah. Good luck with that, uh, Mayor Adams. Good <laughs> luck with that. Jeez. I think he was this uh, resolute when he was a cop. Yeah, really. <laughs> really. Wow. How about their comment that the uh, department's public messaging wasn't up to snuff because it... <laughs> Although they uh, acknowledge, we acknowledge the injuries to police officers, there wasn't the simultaneous acknowledgement of the pain and anger that gave rise to the protests. I mean, talk about snowflake. What was, yeah. you know. I went home and cried. I did. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> you know, there's another statement. I'd just like to read it. The, uh, the opposite, of course. This was from Pat Lynch. From the, the PBA president. The DOI report confirms what police officers knew on the first night of riots. Our city leaders sent us out with no plan, no strategy, no support to deal with unrest that was fundamentally different from any of the thousands of demonstrations that police officers successfully protect every single year. Nearly 400 police officers were injured, struck with bricks, bottles, fire extinguishers, and folding chairs because of the mixed messages emanating from City Hall in Albany. No amount of new training or strategizing will help while politicians continue to undermine police officers and embolden those who create chaos on our streets. Yeah. Pretty good, right? I think so. I think he sort of addressed all of the things that we're all talking about right here. Yeah. Yeah. How about their uh, comment about the uh, 
Again, you know, early in the report, they talk about it being a leaderless group. You know, there were no leaders. Uh, this was just a spontaneous, they tell me, spontaneous yeah. outrage at the events of the George Floyd case. And yet, on page 39, they talk about the groups that were taking a leadership role in organizing these protests did not appear to be organizing or directing violence of any kind. So maybe they know something that, you know, I don't know. Maybe they've identified the leaders that were organizing this, but they put a nice little uh, comment in there that they weren't organizing or directing the violence. Yeah, I'd like to know who these people are, identify them and let them be interviewed by the uh, police that are doing the investigation. Vinny, you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, pretty much this report starts off with, with there should be accountability and, you know, so that we can actually have trust with the community. This report is the biggest um, act of mistrust that the city has put out. They're not giving any answers. They're not giving any, they're not saying who the accountability should go to, saying there's a lack in NYPD leadership, the lack in leadership overall. They don't name anybody else other than the cops. And it seems as if everybody else that was on the street, which is right now to me, and it just looks as if that they're throwing the working cop on the street under the bus. Um, you know, and this doesn't this this report doesn't show any type of uh, resolution, any ideas on how it is things can be fixed. This looks like a political a political scapegoat for for the mayor. You know, listen, they got eleven months left, twelve months left. We all know they're not gonna they're not gonna change anything that went on inside this report. All right, they're going to ride their term out. This is to give them time before they're ready to leave everybody. And then they ride off into the sunset and they leave the next, per the next person with, with a big bag. I mean, this, 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 this DOI report, I don't, I don't know who pays the bill, but I can guarantee it's definitely not worth the, the, the paper that it's put on. That it's written on. That's a good point. How about they, uh, they went after a few cops for uh, having their morning badges, covering their uh, numbers? Don't we have... Uh, our numbers on our helmets. Yeah. How many years now we've been doing that? Badge numbers all over your helmets. At least your 30. Training. I mean, they have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Well, they're clueless. And one of the thing, another thing, uh, uh, Chief, regarding which is in your field more tactics. They want you to tell the protesters how you intend to, to you know, to police their event. Aren't you supposed to have some stealthiness? Aren't you supposed to have a secret to your tactics, not tell people what you're going to do ahead of time so that they can thwart your efforts. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. You know, and then, and if, there, if this was going to be an even handed report, they should have put something in there that the demonstrators and the rioters and the protests should be, you know, equally sharing of their plans with us. Yes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start throwing rocks when we get to Broadway and 33rd. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> the pallet the of bricks is on 48th. <laughs> yeah. No, this was, uh, this was the junior varsity that wrote this report. That yeah. Oh. Wrote the report. But, but you know, some of the other thing was, it came out just the other day that basically the mayor threatened the police executives that you either adopt this or leave. Yeah. Well, does that surprise I mean, you? It's a well, tough call. I, I would think that they, they should have been you know, interviewed about this. What do you think about this? Not adopt it my way or the highway. That's, you know, that's communism, you know? Yeah. My I also, I would love to know, you know, at the planning meeting at the headquarters, whether it was in the chief of department's office or the police commissioner's office, what were the borough commanders told? You know, right. at that very high level, what were they told before the first day, before the second day of these events? Was that they they, can, put, they can put a hood over their head and alter yeah. their voice <laughs> <laughs> when they when they testify to it. They Those weren't. Are they, questions they should have been asked. They definitely were not told exactly what it is that they should have been doing, because if they were, we all know that within those first two nights, this would have been over, over and done with. Well, well you know what? The proof of the pudding with that was when they had had enough at City Hall Park. They said, let's take the park. <laughs> An hour later, it was, you know, that shows the NYPD knows how to do it if you let them. Yeah. Right? No, this was, uh, this was, oh, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall <laughs> in the mayor's office when the instructions were given. You know what they were also pissed off at, Chief? And you know exactly what this is. They had a huge success police-wise on the Brooklyn Bridge when they used a technique 
that they referred to in the report as kettling. Yeah. And they were so pissed because it worked. Yeah. <laughs> it split up all the rioters and they were like, oh, shit, well, you know, yeah. cut the head off the horse, right? You said that numerous times. Yeah, exactly. And then they, you know, they almost, uh, they talk about the uh, cops making arrests only for curfew violations. Listen, when you issue an order for curfew, the idea is it's going to be enforced. Yes. Otherwise, it is no curfew, right? They're amazed that the, all of the concept of arrest. Yeah. yeah I don't really think they are. understand that whole, that whole concept. But, uh, but this is a, like a disturbing thing. So going forward, how does the police department deal with this? What new toys can we use? They didn't let them use mounted. They didn't use drones to determine maybe the rioters are splitting up and going to other areas. We could follow them and see where they are. Aviation. I didn't see AV. I saw NBC's helicopter up there. I never saw those four letters NYPD up in the air. So they had to have been ordered not to use those things. Oh, listen, uh, Vinny, you, you worked many a demonstration, as have I, as has Billy. Did you ever have a group that, that you were working with take over intersections, start directing traffic, holding no, traffic? We and had a group, a large group, enter a street before you secured it with the police. No. I mean, this was this was crazy. This was just craziness. This, uh, that that was proof that they were told to stand down. Yeah, they they were told not to put their hands on anybody. And what 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 initially the mayor's office let happen? was they let our guys get abused day in and day out every single night. It's very, very demeaning to have to go out there and not be able to do your job. I mean, we, we've stood there before and we can, we'll, we'll get yelled at and every once in a while you get something thrown at you. But what these people were doing, you have to sit there and watch them rip your city apart and you can't go in there and grab people and pull them out. That's disgusting. It really was. Yeah. Especially when we built it up. In the, in the, during the early 90s and what we brought the city back to. Yeah. It breaks your heart. You're right. It breaks it your does. heart. And I, I took I took many a beating at a CompStat meeting <laughs> <laughs> for, for this crime drop. <laughs> so? yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I don't think people or, or, they, or know that they care that cops are human beings. And here they were working 12, 14-hour days, waking up and coming back and doing it all over again yeah. On top of COVID and everything else, and just yeah. when is the, what's the breaking point for a human being to act rationally under those conditions? Yeah, and I don't think they they mentioned it at all in their report. There was no compassion. There was no empathy at all for the role of the police during these crazy, crazy days. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just unfair from the from the beginning that when they put pen to paper, this was an unfair report. It wasn't impartial. It wasn't honest. Uh, and again, the big, big missing pieces are the interview with the mayor and the governor. So what, what were the, you know. What were the conversations? Back and forth? I didn't what hear that. What were the conversations that went back and forth either with them or yeah. with the mayor and the brass of this department? Yeah. Because they don't tell you that. Yeah. yeah. The governor was very critical during this. You could pull up some video of him. He was very critical of the police. Oh, he, he was. Yeah. Absolutely was. After after uh, Macy's was uh, burglarized. Yeah. And then, you, as you notice, he pulled the state police out because yeah. if they did something wrong, it would come back on him. And yeah. that's his whole MO. He wants nothing yeah. coming back on him, you know. A real stand-up guy. Yeah, he's oh, a real stand-up stand guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. He takes yeah. responsibility, you know, Put it on me. Put it, and then, then, it, then he said, hey, how about those 12,000 elderly people that thought, that wasn't my fault? 